Techies, this is episode one of my Java Discord Bob tutorial series. In this episode, we're just going to get our workspace set up and get started with the series. So, before we start, this is a, we're going to be writing our code in Java, and I'm not going to be going over any Java concepts. You are going to have to know Java before you start this tutorial series. The only things we're going to be going over is the Java, the JDA concepts. JDA being the library we are going, we are going to use to write our Discord bots. It stands for Java Discord API. So to get started, I'm going to be using IntelliJ IDEA. You can use Eclipse or Visual Studio Code, whatever you want to use. But obviously, we're just going to start creating. We're going to create our new a new project, and then give it a name. I'm going to call mine Tutorial Bot, um, and then save it in whatever location you want. And we're just going to create this. We're just going to, it's just like a not creating a normal project. Java, you can use Maven or Gradle. Uh, don't use like the IntelliJ build system or the Eclipse build system. You can use any JDK you like, uh, Groovy or Kotlin. Set your, we can set our group ID and artifact ID. And then we can just hit create. And um, it's just going to create our project. And then I'll be back once this has finished creating. Okay, so once this is finished creating and just indexing, we can make a couple changes to the build.gradle. So I like to get rid of this test bit and these two test dependencies and then change the version. Uh, so your repositories, you're going to need to make sure you have Maven Central. This is a default for the uh, Gradle and IntelliJ. I'm not sure, but whatever you're using, make sure you have this Gradle setup. Um, plus any plugins you want. So let's say you're, in, you're implementing this into a Minecraft mod or something. Obviously, add this, add these bits into your Minecraft de mod dependency. So what we're going to be doing is to get the dependency. We're going to go to this website I've left in the description. It is the JDA GitHub. So we're going to scroll right down uh, in the README, and you're going to find the well, how we can install it. So Obviously, because I'm using Gradle, I'm going to go here. I've already got the repositories. I'm just going to copy this this dependencies bit. I'm going to paste it in here. And you're going to notice here, rather than numbers for version, it's just going to say version in full capitals. That is because we need to replace it with the version that's up here. And the version is 5.0.0-alpha.13 as, as of when I'm recording this. Obviously, it's pro when you're watching this, it might be bugged up to something else. Uh, as of when I'm recording this, it literally has been bumped up to third alpha 13 an hour ago. So this should be this should be fun. First time installing it and putting it on my machine for me as well. So we're just going to make sure we put this instead of version. Instead of version, we're going to do 5.0.0-alpha.13. And we're just going to hit reload. And we'll see that it downloads the dependency and it will put it into our uh, project. So what we should be able to do is if we go to our, we go in our source file, which seems to have not been generated. Uh, if we go in our source main Java, then we can, I like to have a, I like to have a resource as well. I'm not, we're not going to use it too much in the series, but you know, if we, nope, that's not what I wanted. If we make a, if we make our main classes, then we can, do a, a test so we can make our main class and then have main new package and main class and then we should be able to see we can load in classes like JDA and stuff like that from the JDA library so that means we have imported it correctly so now obviously we can make our main method nothing this is just normal Java and that, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a bot and sort of make it go online. So what we need to do is we need to make a JDA object. Now this is essentially where our bot gets stores into. Uh, so we're going to store our bot in this variable. So JDA equals JDA builder dot create default. And it's going to take in a string of token. I'll explain what this is in a minute. And then we're going to do dot build. And this is going to... It's going to create an exception. Uh, you can surround the try catch if you want, but I'm going to add uh, the method exception signature. So this token, this is essentially like our bot's password. So we do need to actually create a bot application 
in site called Disc um, or a website called Discord Developer. Portal. So this is what the Discord Developer Portal is, and this is where all of your applications uh, for Discord is. It's not necessarily just bots, but it's applications. I've blurred all mine out here, but um, what we what we can do is we can hit new application, and this is how we actually create our application. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Tutorial Bot, and then just hit create. And so this creates an application. You can give it a profile picture. You can give it, you know, you can give it a description. We can fill any of this out. But what we're going to want to do is we want to go down to bot, and then we're going to hit add bot, and just do it. And so here we have a bot. This is like a user. So in Discord, if you have add bots like uh, uh, like Rhythm used to have, um, or MeSeeks, that will have the little bot. Uh, thingy next to it, next to its name. This is going to be like that because it is a bot. So the way we, so actually we need to set up a couple of settings first. So some of these explain, so public bot, um, if this is turned on, anyone can authorize it to their server. However, it's turned off, no one can authorize it to their server apart from you. So it's obviously, it doesn't mean that no one will see it if you have public bot turned off. It just means that no one can add it to their server. So I'm going to make it a private bot for now. Um, but we can always change that later. And then we have some this the, this we are going to we will um, we will have go through this later. But for now we're going to leave it turned off. Um, then the gateway intents for now we're just going to turn the turn these all on and these are uh, essentially sort of like they allow your bot to do certain things so you can see here it has there's you can click to see read more about them but for example the presence intents I believe that I believe that allows you to see you can click it and see and it allows you to view things like um, like their, their current sort of state so um, you can see here it uses presence in their current state and the guild guild being a server so you can view that and you can have guild members it allows you to see obviously guild members that one's kind of obvious and then there's this one which uh, as of for me isn't actually active yet but i hope in the future obviously it will be from august 31st uh, to receive message content in most messages so that's something that's happening but we'll just leave them all turned on for now and we can go over them later but normally you just want to leave them all turned on otherwise you'll have run into issues where you don't have the gateway intents and then this is just a calculator for something we don't need that and so to log into our bot from our code we use something called a bot token now this bot token is sort of like our password for our bot so you want to make sure no one gets this token no one sees it there are some things like on github if you have a public repository and it ends up on the repository uh, discord has some sites that it scans your token for github included so as soon as it realizes that it's on there it will reset your token this is obviously a security um, feature uh, so you want to make sure no one gets this password otherwise they can log on to your bot and do some nasty things so you're going to hit reset token and then yes do it and I've got two-factor authentication enabled, so I have to uh, add my, I have to authorize this, but you should just then be able to see your bot token after that. So I'll be right back once I've authorized this. So once uh, your token's been reset, you should be able to see it. You can only ever see this once. So make sure you either store it somewhere or you uh, remember it. You're not really gonna be able to remember that. Um, otherwise you'll have to reset it. Uh, so. For the purpose of this tutorial, just to make it easier, I'm going to be showing you my token. But for the tutorials after this, I will have it stored somewhere else so that you can't see it. Um, and obviously reset it just after this tutorial. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit copy. And then we're going to paste this in here. And obviously, if you like, you can put this anywhere. And just as long as you import a string with your token in it into this method, then you obviously it will work. Uh, so you can either have it in a jar file or load it as a as a file like a file in just in your project uh, and make sure it's ignored by git if you do have a git repository otherwise like I said your token will be reset every time you make a commit or something like that so that's fun uh, but what this code should do is as soon as we run this it should 
turn the bot online. However, we have no way of actually seeing this as it is not on our server yet. So what we're going to want to do is we want to go back to our Discord developer portal and we want to go to our OAuth2 and the URL generator. So this is going to generate an authorization URL so that we can load up our bot to a server. So we're for scopes, we're just going to need bot for now. We might need a couple later, but we can go over that when we get to it. Um, so then in bot permissions, we are just going to... So this is obviously the permissions it can do. So it's sort of like, it's like a role. Well, it will create a role in this server. It's like giving a role permissions. However, um, if you this doesn't have the default everyone roles. So if you only give it read messages, for example, or send messages, it will only be able to send messages. It cannot do anything else. Whereas obviously a normal user normally would be able to do something else unless you turn it off. So for testing, I normally give it administrator. But then obviously later on, you're going to want to create a new link that only has the things you need in it, as otherwise, as this is a major security hole, as if anyone does end up getting your um, bot token, it just means you can have so, they can do so much more than if all you could do was send messages. So I'm going to do administrator, but obviously remember when you finish making your bot, you need to make sure that you have different bot permissions. Uh, and also just changing it once it's on a server, just changing anything on here doesn't change the permissions it, had on, it has on another server. They have to, it has to be reauthorized with a new link. So it's generated a link down here. And we're just going to copy this and then we can paste this into our, we can, well, we can just go to this link and it's going to take us to an authorization page where we can put it on any sort of bot testing server we like. I would recommend for testing your bot, don't use it on your, you know, your public server with all your friends, just use it on bot testing server. I'm going to continue. It's going to say, um, confirm that you want to grant the, this bot permissions just like adding any other like me seeks or rhythm uh, or anything like that we can hit authorize uh, do the capture and then we should see that in our in our bot testing server the bot should be on our in our server which for me it is so on the bot testing server you can see we've got the tutorial bot here and um, it's offline so what we can do is if we go here, what we should be able to do is if we run this code, it should turn on the bot. So if we run it and there you go, it goes online. And so it will put this in the console and it just, it just logs anything that happens. We can see it manages, it connects to the bot, uh, with the login successful and all that. And so now this is fully, functional bot this we should be able to do whatever, whatever we need with this with like event event listeners we should go over next next uh episode we should have be able to do commands we should be able to do everyone with this bot and that that is all we're going to do for this for this tutorial uh i hope you enjoyed it and next time we'll probably be doing something we'll do, be doing something more interesting like event listeners so i'll catch you then